Visceral fat is this unhealthy kind of fat around the organs and around the liver. And having too much visceral fat is a big risk factor for heart disease and all-cause mortality. The average healthy person between the age of 20 to 30 has been seen to have about 500 grams of visceral fat, which is quite normal. The problem is that you can't see visceral fat because it's located around the organs. That's why the only way to really know about your visceral fat is to take a DEXA scan. I recently took a DEXA scan and my visceral fat was 54 grams, which is up to 10 times lower than the average 30-year-old who isn't overweight. For reference, Brian Johnson's DEXA scan results showed he had visceral fat of 0.42 liters, which if you convert it into grams is about 378 grams. And Paul Saladino's recent DEXA scan showed he had 0.3 pounds of visceral fat, which is 136 grams. In this video I'm going to share with you my full day of eating that has enabled me to achieve such low amounts of visceral fat. I'm going to make a full video about how to reduce visceral fat in the future, so make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. You son of a... Alright, so it's 7.18 a.m. in the morning. I'm gonna have some green tea. We have some sort of organic, loose leaf, extra fine green tea. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to scoop up something like this much. I don't ever like really count how much I take, but it's, I guess, maybe even like three tablespoons of uh, green tea. I'm gonna use this pot usually to make it so I'll make an entire batch for the day and I'll consume this entire thing which I th makes usually something like three three cups three to four cups at maximum maybe usually a three is probably the more accurate and then I'll just sip it throughout the day usually more in the morning half. A 2012 randomized controlled trial showed that catagen enriched green tea for 12 weeks resulted in greater visceral fat loss than in the placebo group. Another 2009 study found that green tea catagens enhanced the loss of abdominal fat from exercise. Exercise did reduce visceral fat and total fat mass, but the green tea group combined with exercise lost more fat across the board as well as visceral fat compared to just the exercise group. So green tea intake does appear to result in greater visceral fat even if you combine it with exercise. So one thing I've heard is that you shouldn't let it to boil 100% when you're making green tea. So it should be like slightly below boiling point. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to fill it up. So it's been a few minutes and we're just going to pour it out. Looks green. <laughs> or, you know semi-green so that's a good sign and uh, you know you could also add glycine to your green tea I don't like green tea with glycine that much I prefer adding glycine to like coffee or uh, milk or yogurt or something like that or whey protein uh, so I, I drink the green tea without anything but uh, you could still add glycine to there as well and uh, yeah you know the glycine is also one of those things that has been found to reduce visceral fat in older adults, they have found that low plasma glycine levels are a marker of visceral adiposity, independent of sex, age, body composition, and chronic diseases. Serum glycine levels are also negatively associated with intramuscular adipose tissue, which is the fat inside the muscles. So it looks like glycine has effects on visceral fat. Part of the reason glycine seems to reduce visceral fat is because it counterbalances methionine, which is an amino acid you get from animal protein. But there's also evidence that methionine restriction reduces visceral fat independent of calorie intake. In humans with metabolic syndrome, 16 weeks of methionine restriction has been seen to improve insulin sensitivity and reduce lipid content in the liver independent of weight loss. So methionine restriction might reduce liver fat in humans as well. And this is kind of interesting because you have Paul Saladino who does eat more glycine from his diet from these collagenous tendon meats but he also eats quite a lot of methionine from the muscle meat. Whereas you have someone like Brian Johnson who doesn't have almost any methionine from his dietary sources and he also doesn't consume that much glycine from his diet. Diet. So he only takes 1200 milligrams of glycine as a supplement. So it seems like the optimal way to go about it is to reduce the dietary methionine intake as well as increase the glycine intake, which is my case. So I consume some methionine from my diet, not a lot, but I also supplement a lot of glycine. So I have low methionine plus high amounts of glycine. So I'm aiming for about 10 to 15 grams of glycine per day and my methionine intake from other foods isn't that high.
All right, so it's almost 10 a.m. I'm going to have my first meal of the day, which is my protein shake, my signature pro protein shake. And actually, I've been having uh, quite amazing new recipes or new variations of it that it actually turns almost into like an ice cream. So uh, it's uh, much thicker than like a smoothie or a protein shake itself. So I'm going to share with this uh, recipe with you. It's delicious. It's very easy to make, low calories, high protein, no sugar, and uh, yeah, tastes like ice cream pretty much. So what you need is I'm going to blend some, uh, some of this protein. I have whey protein here. I'm going to put one scoop of whey protein here. And the best thing about it is you can you know, change it according to your taste or flavor. This is chocolate whey protein. And I put one scoop, which is about 25 grams of protein. So I'm going to add a little bit more. So I'm going to add a half scoop of more protein, so that ends up giving it to like 35 grams of protein or something like that. Next, I'll put creatine. So I'm taking creatine again right now to, um, I guess I'm focusing a little bit more on strength for the time being right now. And I'm going to add three grams of creatine. Let's put this here. Next, betaine or trimethylglycine. So I'm taking betaine for the sake of lowering my homocysteine levels which is going great <laughs> so i've already reduced my homocysteine to below 10 which is the goal and uh, i'm gonna see if i can get it down to maybe like five which uh, is uh, potentially even better so anything below 10 is already like optimal and uh, for that i've i have been taking two grams of tmg before over the last few months so i'm gonna increase it a little bit and see if it's going to reduce my homocysteine even more. So in some of the trials, up to four grams of TMG is uh, what's used. So here is a half teaspoon is about 1.6 grams of TMG. So I'm going to be putting one teaspoon and it's like a hefty, hefty teaspoon with a little bit of like a scoop on top. So that is going to be, yeah, four grams of TMG from here. And lastly, of course, we're going to put glycine. And, uh, you know, I don't really count how much glycine I put. <laughs> so this is for the methionine balance as well as the collagen synthesis. So I'm aiming at least 10 to 15 grams of glycine from a supplemental source. And, uh, of course, I'm getting some glycine from a diet as well. And, uh, yeah, I'll put, so this is a teaspoon. I'll put two teaspoons, which is, you know, approximately five grams of um, I'm gonna put a little bit more so like you know six grams of glycine in here now the next step that you this is kind of where the magic mostly happens so the next step is to put some frozen stuff <laughs> so you can use whatever kind of frozen berries or frozen um, fruits whatever that you like as the base of this concoction. So <laughs> I've been using a lot of frozen strawberries. So just put them in here. You can, I've used uh, frozen bananas, frozen blueberries, blackberries, mango, pineapple. So you can, yeah, pretty much choose what flavor you like. Do you like to have it more strawberry? Do you like to have it more banana or blueberry? Whatever it is, you can always choose the flavor of this drink or this ice cream <laughs> based on what kind of a fruits, frozen fruits of put in here. And uh, yeah, the magic happens because it's frozen. So it becomes much thicker once you blend it. So if you put water, then it doesn't really work, which is why you need to use frozen berries. So actually I'm going to put usually, you know, fill it to the top. So this is about... 300 grams per bag so I have, I have put half of it so there's 150 plus the other ones so 200 grams of strawberries which um, you know is quite low in calories 32 calories per 100 60 calories for this entire thing and uh, 10 grams of carbs which is a really good mix now what i like to do is also add dark chocolate so this is dark cacao powder, and this is high quality brand from Iwo. So I'll put, and this is again like for taste preference. If you don't like cacao flavor, 
especially with strawberries, then you don't have to put it. But uh, you know, the cacao flavor with bananas is great in my opinion. So I'll put one scoop of this cacao, dark cacao, raw cacao powder with uh, high flavonoids. And um, what I like to do is also add a little bit of psyllium husk. So this can tend to make it a bit more thicker. You can also add pectin, which is another great way to make it thicker. And the final ingredient is uh, water. So uh, you don't want to put too much water because uh, it becomes too liquid that way. So I, right here I have like a cup of water, but uh, the entire cup is too much probably. So you want to actually put slightly less than a cup. So if, or actually, yeah, pretty much I'll put a little bit less right now. So if it becomes too thick or if the blender doesn't blend, then uh, it's because it's uh, too solid. There's not enough water. So I'll start off with, you know, kind of half a cup of water and uh, we'll see how it goes first. So yeah, it's a bit, a little bit too little water, so I'll put slightly more. So as you can see, it looks like ice cream pretty much. You want to blend it for maybe 30 seconds and uh, yeah, it's like thick ice cream tastes super great. You can adjust the flavors like this is my favorite thing <laughs> right now. Like it feels like you're cheating on your diet because it's like ice cream tastes like or has the consistency of uh, ice cream. In addition to the protein shake, I do actually have about five walnuts and a piece of dark chocolate, which I forgot to record. All right, it's going to be dinner time soon. We're going to cook this 600 grams of sweet potatoes. We're going to cook it in the oven. So I'm going to just chop it into some pieces first. And uh, yeah, it's going to be like sweet potato fries, except, you know, they're not cooked in oil or stuff like that. I'm going to cook these kind of sectors. You know, you can make them however thick you want them. Put it in the oven. I'm going to cook it at uh, 205 degrees Celsius for 21 minutes. Is is the sweet spot that I found. So this is what I'm having for dinner. These are cucumbers and tomatoes from my mother's garden. This beetroot salad, it's like beetroot vinaigrette. Kimchi as well. Some leftover egg whites from my wife who eats the yolks and I'll eat the egg whites. So this is what the plate is. Tomatoes, cucumber, beans, beetroot, some egg whites. And this is, yeah, this, the meat jello. <laughs> this is a gelatinous meat dish, traditional meat dish here in Estonia. And uh, yeah, it's cooked in like the bony parts. So it becomes gelatinous. So that's why it's, you know, called meat jello. <laughs> and it's super delicious. And it's, you know, I think it's a very good balance for glycine and methionine. You get a bunch of glycine from there. And these are the 600 grams of sweet potatoes. And uh, I'll also, Today I bought some nice blue cheese. So uh, this is going to be for, you know, you can say, oh, vitamin K2, spermidine, but it also <laughs> tastes good. So I'll, I don't know how much I'll eat. Probably something like this much, I guess. Let's see. Yeah, I don't even, you know, count how much I'm eating. But uh, this much blue cheese is kind of tasty. And lastly... Stilton. Stilton, okay. <laughs> and uh, this is... Extra virgin olive oil, this is pretty kind of, it's from Italy, and uh, yeah, the very tasty, it's quite spicy. So there was a recent, this study that found that three tablespoons of olive oil per day was linked to 20% lower mortality compared to one tablespoon. So for the sake of that, <laughs> I'm going to add two more tablespoons, you know, it's like, I guess, 400 calories extra. And uh, yeah, just getting some of that tasty olive oil in here. And uh, yeah, that's it. If I were to guesstimate the calories, then uh, it's the sweet potatoes are something like, I guess, 500 calories, the olive oil, 400, so 900. 
the ig 100 blah 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 so i guess like something like 1300 calories something like that and uh, yeah it's quite easy at least for me and i eat it with a spoon before you laugh at me then you know in the military i always ate everything with a spoon because you know if you're in a forest then you're gonna have time to cut the food with your fork and knife at a fancy restaurant so it's like quick and easy you can use it as a knife you can use it for a soup you can use it as a fork so this is the this is the original multi multifunctional tool the swiss army knife of cutlery so yeah i always eat with a That's spoon <laughs> yes so yeah and uh, some wriggle water here also, what I forgot to record was that after my dinner, I had the same protein ice cream, but this time I made it with two bananas. And I used only 20 grams of protein. And I also eat three Brazil nuts after dinner, which is 100 calories. And lastly, I eat a kiwi about two hours before bed, because there's research that it helps with sleep. I want to take a quick break to announce you that you can now order my book, The Longevity Leap. Containing over 8,000 references to scientific articles and studies, The Longevity Leap is an evidence-based overview of the biology of aging, chronic diseases that kill most people, and practical lifestyle routines that have been proven to improve your health and slow down aging. You can order the book at thelongevityleap.com. With your order, you will also get two bonus chapters, one about skin aging and the other about my personal routines. Head over to thelongevityleap.com to get your copy today. So this is what a typical day of eating looks like for me. In total for the day, I'm getting about 2300 calories, 125 grams of protein, 75 grams of fat, and about 240 grams of carbs. As you can see, I'm not on a zero sugar diet. I get over 200 grams of carbs on a regular basis. And my visceral fat is extremely low, and my blood sugar markers like hemoglobin A1c and fasting insulin are also very low. So despite eating over 200 grams of carbs a day, my insulin sensitivity is very good and my visceral fat is very low. Sugar intake is generally associated with higher visceral fat stores, but I think it's mostly a concern if you're actually overeating calories and you're gaining weight. High fat intake is also linked to visceral fat, and again, it matters more if you're actually gaining weight. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.